Frito Lay, every you know the the Amer America's greatest snack company, uh, part of PepsiCo. I think I knew that, but wh whenever I read the article, I I had like a oh okay kind of moment. Uh, the employees in in in, in Topeka, Kansas where one of their factories are, one of their larger factories are, are currently on strike uh, because there is a, a shortage in employees. Uh, and you're about to find out why there's a shortage of employees because now the, the workers that are at this factory uh, had to work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. And, uh, uh, and, they, and they're not seeing anything in return for it. They pulled up all this overtime because there's staffing shortages. Uh, and why is there staffing shortage? Gee, I don't, I, I mean, what could it be? What could it be that could lead to these steps? Is it just people don't want to work? Is it people are just so lazy? They don't want to work. It's the handouts from the government that have come down. The people just don't want to work anymore. No, it's because minimum wage hasn't gone up in 10 fucking years. The government isn't doing anything to help the people. Corporations aren't doing anything to help the people. And there's and there's more uh, an upward transfer of wealth in our society. And that's pretty evident in the case of Frito-Lay, comma, PepsiCo. In 12 years, employees have seen a raise of 77 cents an hour. In twelve now, yeah, some some people may be like, well, you know, the company needs to make money. They have so many factories everywhere, and 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 then the CEO has to take care of himself too, and the upper management has to take care of themselves. What do you expect these companies to do? Well, Frito Lay uh, made eighteen point two billion dollars in revenue last year during a pandemic. Because guess what? When people get stressed out or depressed or anxious or what have you. Snacking is something that they do. I do. I do it. I fucking definitely do it. I'm a big snacker, man. I put I put on a little bit of pudge because of the because of the extra snacking. But I will say that I have not snacked on any Frito Lay products because Trader Joe's and Aldi do not carry a lot of free Frito Lay products. And you know now I'm trying to snack healthier trying to eat more fruits, you know, like hummus, that sort of stuff. I'm trying to not be... Sweets are tough for me to kick. Anyway, not the point. The point is, 77 cent raise in 12 years. Meanwhile, during a pandemic, you made $18.2 billion, which, by the way, is half of the revenue of PepsiCo. So half of the revenue that this giant, even gianter corporation made came from this giant corporation and they can't pay their employees uh, more than an additional 77 dollars uh, 77 cents an hour how is that possible well it's possible because there's an upper transfer of wealth it's possible because the working class in this country are treated like dog shit it's possible because Kansas is a right to work state and capitalists have convinced Americans that that's all they have the right to do is work. And whatever fucking pittance we give you is what we give you. Meanwhile, the price of shit's going to go up because that's what it does. That's how booms and busts work. Look, if you have an economic system where every so often it collapses destroying anybody that's in the middle or lower classes that have to then crawl their way back up to the top while the government then bails out using socialism because because in America there's socialism for corporations but not for people which is what socialism is meant to be there for then yeah ain't nobody gonna want to fucking work for your company man because that's what you represent you represent the collapse of the working class the manufactured collapse of the working class. The people that helped you earn that revenue are seeing barely anything of it. A fraction of a percent of it is all they get to see. 77 cents an hour is all you fucking gave when on when uh, during a pandemic you made 18.2 billion dollars. 
And then the article, they talk about, well, you know, during the pandemic for a short little while, for a couple of weeks, they were giving people, um, you know, about uh, about 20 bucks a day extra. They were giving people extra 20 bucks a day. So it was about 100 bucks a week for a couple of weeks. And that's what they think is enough. I mean, they're so out of touch. The, 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 the CEOs, the politicians, they're so out of touch with what's going on here. When the price of milk goes up from three fifty to four fifty, they don't realize how big of a jump that is, and what that actually means for the American family because they have so much wealth that a dollar jump in in the price of milk is, you know, chump change. That it's fucking nothing. So I mean, you know, so so Kansas kind of looks at these strikes usually right wingers look at these strikes really democrats do it too they look at these strikes and they go well you know this is why we have a work shortage oh these lazy fuck no it's not we don't have a work shortage we don't have a labor shortage we have a wage shortage we have an income shortage these fucking ceos want to hoard their fucking wealth that's why people don't want to fucking work for them and you're going to see more of these strikes coming up. We're going back to that point. A hundred years ago, this was... We had, we had two decades, two, three decades of really, really strong labor actions. And we're, we're, we're veering in that direction again, which is good. But I hope that we can learn our lessons from the previous time we did this, which is that the state is going to resort to violence very quickly because that's what they do. When the strikers and the working class retaliate, they're going to they're going to label us as violent. So we got to fight that kind of propaganda. And they're going to try to use some Cold War tactics against us. Oh, the Russians have infiltrated the... the oh, the Russians are what's causing this to... Oh, it's the communists here. They can't, you know. They're going to use some kind of boogeyman. And the fourth thing is, again, we'll likely win. If we can figure out how to do general strikes across the country, coordinated efforts... Uh, whether it's citywide, whether it's statewide, what have you, general strikes with solidarity strikes will likely win because we did it in the past. That's how we won before. 1934, we saw general strikes all across the country. The National Guard was called. They got violent. The radical socialists pushed back against them, defending themselves. And then in 1935, the Wagner Act was signed by FDR, whose administration basically equated them to terrorists. And he said, okay, well, they don't seem to be backing down from the violence. All right, let's give into some of these demands or else we're going to see this shit nonstop. So the Wagner Act got signed. It strengthened unions. It gave the working class people more collective bargaining powers. It actually legitimized the working class in this country. During the Depression, people's lives were getting better because... We had general strikes that pushed back against the government, and they had they were forced into the legislation. Why? Because they were fucking scared of us. What's going on in Frito at Frito Lay, and all the other thousands of strikes, thousands of strikes we've seen, prove that. And look, if you're one of these people that are against this stuff and they're like, oh, these people are just complaining. They don't no, Nobody wants to work anymore. Look, these people are not asking for too much. They're asking for a fair, livable wage, a wage that they can, you know, they, that they can take home and, and not worry, how am I going to pay these bills? They want decent hours. They want to see their families. That's what they talk about. Hey, I want to see my family. I haven't seen my family in forever. One of the, one of the people that gave testimonials um, said, you know, I, I worked this 18 hour shift and I came home on 4th of July and I passed out and I didn't even hear the fireworks going off. I just slept. I didn't get time to spend with my family. 
or my kids or anything. I was so exhausted that I passed out. That should not be how work operates. You should not just go to a job, come home, fall asleep, wake up, and then just go back to that job. That's not how life should be. But under a right to work state, under the, the, the capitalist idea of right to work, that's all they want. Fucking Andrew Carnegie, who's, who's championed in the city of Pittsburgh, where I'm from, that's what he wanted. He wanted, he literally said, I would love if my factories could just be, would be operational nonstop, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because that's just constant production, constant profits for them. That's not fucking fair to the people that you're, that, that are helping you make that infinite profit. So in order to counter these strikes, Frito-Lay started using coach buses that they would bring in and, and uh, uh, you know, ship in temporary workers and scabs to, to cover the strike, right? But the problem is there weren't too many temporary workers and scabs coming in to, to work at Frito-Lay. There was maybe three or four people per, per bus, Um so, so, you know, the longer the strike goes, the more money they're going to end up losing. And, and, and I, want, I want more people to catch wind of what's going on with Frito-Lay because I think one of the ways that you can kind of get them to start, you know, talking to their employees and, and helping their employees get better wages is don't buy their shit. Stop buying Pepsi products. Stop buying Frito-Lay stuff. Buy something different. If you see Frito-Lay on the fucking logo of the bag, don't buy it. This is not just a Topeka, Kansas issue. Then it becomes a national issue. Like I said, I don't I don't buy Frito-Lay stuff very often. Um, every so often, I'm, I might buy a bag of chips or something like that because I'm on the road, and I'm, you know. But in this instance, I I I won't do that I'll go, I'll go to trader joe's and buy buy a bag of chips from there you know and enjoy a nice but probably a healthier snack there's other options now here's the thing there's local support for these strikers because the local community in, in, in Topeka has seen a lot of these sort of industries come in, right? There's there's a lot of factories. There's a lot of this sort of production stuff that's happening in those in the in these areas. And when they see that their neighbors and their friends and their family uh, are, are being treated this way, this this unfair way, where they're not reaping the benefits of the work that they're putting in, they're like, "Well, this is bullshit. We're going to support you guys in whatever way they can." So there's people that are. Um, helping feed the strikers, right? They'll bring them food. And uh, they also help set up a fund to, to pay their bills. And this is what's called solidarity, <laughs> which is a core tenant of how socialism operates, which is the core tenant of how the labor movement operated. In fact, whenever there were general strikes across the city, there, there was a lot of this sort of stuff. Right. The, the, the strike, the, uh, the 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 leaders of the strikes would would organize ways to to open up soup kitchens so that the strikers could get fed and, and kind of rotate in ships. Right. When there was a massive general strike called in, in Seattle, um, at, you know, they, they organized trash pickups. They organized delivering milk to houses or so organized delivering oil to to the hospital so that they could keep the lights run, uh, lights on. And the National Guardsmen that were called by uh, the Democrat Mayor Ole Hansen, who was arguably as paranoid, if not more, than Richard Nixon, who was a Republican. So you can kind of see, hey, Republican Democrats still act the same fucking way because it's not about party lines. It's about it's a, it's about a way of life and, and what you believe in. Capitalism makes you fucking paranoid because it's, it's all based on competition. You never know who's going to fucking stab you in the back to get that promotion that you're hardworking for. That's the mentality that these people live under. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or Republican. But Ole Hansen called in the National Guard, set up, uh, you know, these military checkpoints across the city with Gatling guns and all this other shit. The National Guardsmen said they've never seen the city run more efficiently. Gee, 
No fucking shit. A city that's that it, 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 a city that kind of gives up the fact that we need to make a, a certain profit point and instead goes along the model of, hey, let's just make sure that we're taking care of each other. Run smoother? When you have cooperation instead of competition as the driving force behind a society, the society operates better. Holy fucking shit. This is bad. Capitalism operates backwards. It, it operates backwards to logic. It is an antithetical economic system. Under capitalism, as you move up the ranks, you make more money for less work. Well, that's weird. Are, are, isn't it preached that the harder you work, the more money you'll likely make? Well, that that's so weird. The more work you do, the lesser you're seen on the totem pole, the more you're producing. You're actually producing the thing that these companies are, are, are selling to consumers, the less, it, less income you see. Well, that's fucking weird. It's also an invasion of privacy under capitalism. Work is used as a way to invade your privacy. The amount of people that will end up contacting me, right? I'll, I'll book people on shows, and I would record these shows, right? I would I would record them, and as a way to kind of entice more people to come through, I, the one of the shows I used to produce, I would uh, I would put up clips of them on the internet. So one or two bits, you know. If it was a headliner, I would use two or three, something like that. So all in all, it's you 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 get to see, um, including my performance, about four different comics in about a twenty minute video. Right. And, and it was cool. It was it was pretty nice. Um, and I would make sure the comics were kind of OK with with that. But then I would get contacted and say, hey, I'm applying for a new job. And when you search my name on YouTube, this clip comes up um, and I don't want people to see this clip. Can you like take me off of the, you know, the description, all that? And I would oblige by it. But part of that is because they didn't want people to see their comedy. They didn't they didn't want to see their private life. They don't want to see what they did outside the nine to five because it could affect the fact that they could get a job. How fair is that? If you're an accountant or a teacher or a factory worker or a designer, whatever, whether you're a socialist, a communist, whether you're somebody that's into bondage, what difference does that make in doing that job? If at home, you like BDSM. If at home, you're a pot smoker. If at home, you, you like to knock back a couple of brews. As long as the next day you wake up, show up to work, and do you know a, a, a damn good job as a designer, accountant, a teacher, or what have you, what does that matter? What does it matter what you post on social media? If, 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 if you support Daniel Hale, for example, does that make you less shit, less efficient of an accountant? Does that make you a, 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 a worse teacher? I would say that it probably makes you a better teacher because you're probably teaching these kids, you know, true American history, not the propaganda bullshit that that the American education system wants you to learn. It boils down to compliance. That's what work is used as in capitalism. Work isn't used as a way to... Um, better society right we don't do these certain jobs in whatever way to like uplift people and to improve society and to better each other's lives no it it is compliance and control you need this job to pay these bills to live your life so the job becomes the central focal point the employers have more control so what do they do they control every aspect of your life oh your private life has something that we as a corporation don't like Henceforth, we will either fire you or just not hire you. And because we're a corporation, we're allowed to be discriminatory in that way. In most instances, if you're if you believe a certain thing or support a certain thing, probably not affecting your job. 
The only thing that I think you should be on the lookout for is like vehement racism. Because if you're if you're a business and let's say you're a store owner and you hire somebody that is racist and a black person comes into the store and they like are super rude to them and don't really show them around or or make them feel unwelcome. Well, that's not doing their job properly. Their ideology has affected that. But in terms of socialism, in, ser in terms of being a communist, in terms of being a supporter of Julian Assange, how is that going to affect them? How is that going to affect somebody trying to buy some fucking candles? Being a shitty employer is what affects your business. That's why I'm saying, hey, if you're out there and you're a big fan of Lay's potato chips, do don't buy it anymore. Don't buy it until and and be public about it. Say, hey, I'm boycotting fucking Frito Lay and PepsiCo till they learn how to treat their employees properly. Don't let the corporations control your life in any way, shape, or form. That's what these strikes and that's what the labor movement is about. Let's pop over to some comments. Aram, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you for joining. Uh, Fred says, I've got 24 hours in my day. How many you got? <laughs> uh, oh, man. I snack on $1 bag of chips. Fred, what, what kind of bags or chips are you getting, Fred? What kind of bags? I'm curious to know what your snack routine is. <laughs> uh... Let's see. Uh, every time somebody leaves a new comment, it scrolls to the bottom on Rockfin. It, it, it's it's a little difficult to keep track of all of them. So sorry if this, this part's just a wee bit awkward. Um, Holly says Burger King employees made a we all quit video in Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah, it's a wage shortage. Like you say, it's a wage shortage. Yeah, that's awesome. I hope they articulated the fact that they fucking aren't getting paid enough and are and are uh, they 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 know their value as people. And it's not fucking seven twenty five an hour with zero fucking benefits. Uh, oh, here's a, a I like this ARM. Uh, do monthly targeted boycotts of major corporations. Say start with Exxon Mobil, maybe even attach a uh, a, a target price for gas. Uh, peg peg return to patronage only after Exxon Mobil drops their gas to two dollars per gallon or drivers will go across the street down the block or go across town that's not a bad idea Tar targeted targeted boycotts of corporations would be um would be would be a very very good idea and it would again it would hit them to to the only fucking thing that matters which is their bottom fucking line uh aram also says the consumers have power to create a culture of business being responsive to people's interests, meaning the masses, people who shed their behaviors, shed the behaviors of peasants. Yeah, uh, you're you're absolutely right. Uh, and again, that's that's also another way when consumers push back in this way. That's another way that the working class is showing its power. That's another way the working class is saying, "Hey, you're not in control of this, or you shouldn't be." And the propaganda would suggest, you know, oh, you're you're being this, you're being that, right? You're being you're you're being confrontational. You're not being agreeable, which is something else that corporations look for. Are you agreeable? Are are you are are you going to just listen to what we say? Are you going to look at our corporate policy and criticize it when we when we start stripping freedoms away? When we have a specific dress code, that's another thing I never understood about working in these sort of corporate settings. Is like there are certain uh, there are certain 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 jobs, I guess, that need a, a particular type of attire. But if you're working in an office and you're not really seeing, you know, who can express yourself the way you want to express yourself. You know, don't show up naked or or whatever. Like, but you know, if you want to fucking wear a graphic tee with with Vader on it, then not go for it. Those environments to me were were a lot easier to work with. Uh, Gene points out something interesting. Weird man, I just had someone try to link my Rockfin account to 
to Google link, then my internet was down for a couple hours. Strange shit. That is very strange, Gene. Um, you know, I've been dealing with some uh, odd, um, odd internet things, you know, and, and this sounds like a very privileged problem. And I, and I recognize that it is, but like our Hulu was down on our TV and, and it kept saying like the internet was out, but it wasn't. So, I mean, we tried everything and it just seemed like, like, like Hulu was down, but like everybody else, like my sister lives in Maryland and we contacted her and she was like, everything works fine on our TV. So yeah, it's, it's, it's odd when stuff like that happens. Um, sometimes like I'll find that my internet has actually is slower for some reason. Uh, like if I'm looking at certain articles, it's, it's, it, it, it runs slower. It is weird. It is weird. I will admit that it is very strange. Boycott Frito Lake, folks. Don't buy those chips. Tell them to treat their fucking workers properly. Your, your fucking CEO doesn't need a second helicopter or another yacht. Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them. Um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it, and uh, and you guys help keep this uh, keep keep this this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.